unbelievable. And we're live on Facebook and YouTube. So you guys can uh, watch it, comment. If you see something, let us know. In the studio today, we have the Take a Soldier Fishing Group, Naples Take a Soldier Fishing Group. We've got uh, Colonel Tim Fritz. We got Steve Lloyd and Captain Rich Hampton of the Sheriff's Office. And uh, you guys are like, you guys are like, this is the weekend. This is showtime. It's this ready it? all year, and here we are, and we're ready to rock and roll. Yeah, no, that's great. So first off, I and I know we have the colonel here, and uh, colonel, welcome to Naples. I mean, this is great. Thanks, it's great to be here. Yeah, Lieutenant Colonel Tim Fritz. He's uh, been in the military for how, how many years? You've been in the military? Yeah, I'm, uh, eighteen and a half years now, man. United States Air Force. Go, team that's Freedom, right, buddy? Woo, team that's freedom. it. That's it. Former uh, Air Force veteran. Uh, good, good times in the Air Force. I know Rich is as well. And uh, we have a special guest over there, Mason Hampton, which uh, we'll talk about him a little bit. But uh, yeah, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Colonel. And we're going to talk a little bit about Take a Soldier Fishing and why are you here? I mean, yeah, sure. this is this is great. No, it's great stuff. So uh, thanks for having me on. Re really appreciate the opportunity to talk a little bit about this organization and kind of how I got involved with it. Um, just a little bit about my background. So I grew up in the great state of Pennsylvania, left mm -hmm. as quickly as I possibly could, <laughs> uh, continue to move further and further south. And here I am in Naples, so probably not leaving. So it works out great for everybody. But uh, <laughs> joined the Air Force 2003, went to the Colorado School for Wayward Boys and Girls, which is known as the Air Force Academy. <laughs> Air Force. Yep, loved it. Great place. Uh, played some baseball out there, a little track and field. Fantastic opportunity as a, as a kind of a young guy joining the Air Force. Uh, after that, went into pilot training, ended up flying C-130s, best aircraft in the Air Force. I'll fight anyone that says anything different. So from there, um, spent some time in Little Rock, Germany, bounced around, uh, ended up flying 135s, KC-135s for fueling mission. Fueler, really yeah. a great gig as well. Enjoyed it. Uh, fantastic mission. And then was fortunate enough to take uh, command of a flying squadron in uh, Appling, Texas, the 39th Airlift Squadron, uh, best Airlift Squadron on the planet without a doubt. So I uh, really enjoyed that. Um, blessed to have had those opportunities. And uh now I live in um, Northern Virginia. I'm flying C-40s at Andrews Air Force Base, 89th Airlift Wing. So we do airlift for our, our nation's leadership. So, wow, that's a, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you for your service and and to have you know men and women like yourself to keep us safe. I know Steve and and Rich were you know thankful that you know that you're you're there doing it every day and sacrificing a lot for our country. So it's, thank you very much. It's, it's sure, very, absolutely. very important. I'll go over to Steve real quick. Steve, uh, you're the founder of Naples Take a Soldier Fishing. Give, give us a little rundown of what your life's been this week. Yeah, a little well, busy. How did we get to this point? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not much sleep, uh, a lot of anxiety. Uh, it's, it's been a, it's always interesting. And what we do is we plan for this thing all year. All right. And we have a great group of people. We have a great community. Our demographic can help fund this thing. But we have a lot of people that all take a part in planning this thing. Somehow I got to be the unlucky guy that gets up on the stage and has the microphone in his face all the time. However that happened, I, it's a long story. But uh, I want to make and represent us as best I can. But the real show is the troops. We bring these troops in here. And uh, if, if you ever get a chance to come down and, and we'll talk about how you can come down and witness the whole program this year. Uh, don't miss it because this is this is something that's planned all year. A lot of effort. Uh, it is a 365 day planning operation for sure. We will start planning. Our, our event is this Saturday. We'll start planning on Sunday. Already coming up with ideas uh, to help make the next year go even better. But yeah, it, as far as to answer your question this week, it's chaos. It's controlled chaos. But everything's coming together. The troops are here. They're so excited. I mean, I've talked to several of them already so far. <laughs> And they're not uh, running around a foreign soil getting shot at. They're going on a boat and going fishing, and they're going to play Ooh. golf, and they're going up to Bass Pro Shop and do a little bass fishing and shopping. Dude, it's uh, I'm, I'm getting chills thinking about it, just watching these young guys come in here and say, wow, look where we're at. Yeah, and I know it's a, it's a full-year event of planning, and, and you guys do fundraisers throughout the year. I mean, there's just a lot to it. This is like, I would say, Super Bowl weekend for you guys. This is This is huge, right? It's here. I was just uh, taking a shower before I come up here, and I got to head to the hotel next to start meeting some of the guys. And I was thinking, holy cow, we're here. You know, we've been talking about oh, this thing's just around the corner, and then it hit me today that it's actually here. So, yeah, um, we do spend all year planning for this thing. This is a Super Bowl. We like, you know, we have that self-pride where every year this thing has gone off really well, and we say, all right, how do we outdo next year? And somehow this group 
they pull together and they make this thing better from year to year. And I don't know how they do it, but they do it. This year is going to be spectacular. I'll tell you right now, the, the cast of characters that we have coming in from the military is super special. Uh, probably the most uh, uh, awarded and the, the highest uh, group of guys that have been down range, kicking indoors, beating the bad wolf down. These are the, the men and women who deserve to be here. I'm so proud. I'm just, I'm just happy. And yeah, you know, we do plan all year and we are a completely volunteer organization. There's no payroll. Our community, our volunteers, our board members, they bust their asses all year to make this thing happen. And that's what I'm most proud about. Yeah, no, that's great. And, and Captain Rich Hampton from the Collier County Sheriff's Office, good friend of mine forever, right? So I know that the Sheriff's Office and Sheriff Rambos has been extremely supportive of, of, of this program, right? So absolutely, a lot of our members that work at the Sheriff's Office our big part, a big part, and Steve is a former uh, Car County Sheriff's Office member, trained me a long time ago. So that's great. So you guys get the opportunity as agency members to give back to the community and, and get involved in something yeah, like this. Absolutely. So as you know, retired chief, um, Sheriff Rambos is a huge supporter. We got over 300 members in the agency that are veterans. So he recognizes wow. that that's a, it's a large pool of guys that are working for the SO that have spent time, as, you, as Steve just said, downrange. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and he, he supports, as well as Colonel Bloom, what you might not know is Colonel Bloom's father was a Green Beret. Yeah. Fought in two wars, yeah. right? Korea, Vietnam. It's, 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 in the blood. Yeah, military. so you bring this event up to either one of them, and they are huge supporters. And then when you look at the board, right, starting with Steve, uh, 30 years in the job. You know, you've got two lieutenants, three lieutenants. I mean, you've got Danny Rogers. Everybody that's on that board has some skin to the Thaddeus Rodis. That and Neil, the, you know, so Neil Boy. But but it's it's just a great opportunity for the sheriff to also recognize those service members that are coming into his community that uh, you know, because they're keeping us safe downrange and he's keeping us safe here at home. So there's a natural tie. Yeah, no, that's great. And this is kind of a special uh Naples take a soldier fishing event for you. Uh, you have brought in a special guest that that um, you know this means a lot to you. Your 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 boy. It does. Macy, come over here real quick. Come on, come on, come on over here. We got get, get get sneak your head in a little bit oh, there, boy, Mason. Here we go. Come on, give your dad a little hug or something like that. But no, <laughs> yeah. Mason, we want to we want to thank Mason. Give him a round yeah, of applause for his service. There you go. Um, how's it feel to have your son stand next to you? Man, it's surreal. Air it Force. Is surreal. You know, when I got involved in this program, uh, he was just a little guy, you know, and to, <laughs> to, to think about now he's out of Travis Air Force Base flying to all parts of the world, Afghanistan, Iraq, done a lot in the, in the Pacific but with Hawaii, Guam, Japan, Korea. Every other week he's going on a mission and uh, now he's home and I'm going to enjoy the heck out of it. And it really does mean something for me to look up and see him with all these other troops. Yeah. And you know what? I didn't know Mason was coming in today. So I'm like, so glad, but we, yeah. we definitely, before you leave, let's, let's get together. We gotta sure. get him on that thing. Hey that's Tim, awesome. another thing that's Thanks, really, Mason. really, really cool is uh, I didn't know Mason was coming in until a little while ago. And uh, it's funny last night we had a meeting, we got together with some of the troops and Mason as well. And my son, uh, all, also works for the sheriff's office. Yeah, he's he's awesome. He's out there. Awesome too. Uh, he, he and uh, he's also a captain, and he is working in this program with us as well as one of the captains. And I found out last night that him and Mason are going to be on the boat together. Oh Jesus! Oh God! All hell's going to break <laughs> oh, loose. I'm going to tell you right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> do they have? Do they have an end for you know for the? Hey, the contest or is it like you don't think they're going to catch any fish do you dude let me tell you something i don't know what they're going to catch <laughs> but it's going to be a crazy time they're going to have a good time yeah, kyle is the best kyle, yeah. and he's a good fun. damn fisherman well, too kyle yeah. lloyd has made it made it known he's winning this tournament he put it out he did well uh, christ's dad runs it well he finished second you know <laughs> and, I, and i'll tell you nepotism, i like it good work you know what's real, really cool is uh in this tournament uh the best of the best captains are on our list. They they all call me the week after this tournament and say, hey, what's the next date? Because they plan around this thing. This is their favorite tournament. And we don't give away any money. We don't give away anything. It's, it's just because of the what, who we're taking fishing. And uh, the best of the best are here. So if you do find yourself on the podium, you've kicked some serious ass on some fair, all fair right. quality. And, and I will say I'm proud of Kyle. He he. He got nosed out by an ounce last year. He finished second place. Oh, he got nosed out too. by an ounce. He's going to yeah. let you know it was an ounce. Yeah, he's got some revenge in his blood right now. You yeah, see it in his yeah. eyes. No, he's upset great. about uh, it. Yeah. He's carrying that cross. That's great. <laughs> Colonel, I got to ask you this. Um, 
you know, you're you're still there. You're active. Sure. Why is this so important for these young men and women to come down and do something like this? So that's a really that's a real easy answer for me, at least. Um, and and I'm, it's probably the same for everyone. But so I talked to a lot of people that transition in and out of the military. Right. They they go off to do other things. And I talk to them and go, hey, listen, what are you doing now? And they'll, they'll tell me I'm either flying for the airlines or I've got a corporate job. or I'm doing X, Y or Z. And, and I say, well, what do you miss about the military? You know, and it's it's one word every single time. And it's camaraderie. Right. It's the it's the the common thread of patriotism that that runs through people that are the same. And that is everyone from first responder to military through connections. It doesn't matter. All those people are exactly the same. They're cut from the same cloth. They wear a name tag in the in the um, in the pursuit of service of others. Right. And that's what this organization is about. These people come down here from camar for camaraderie, to build relationships, to grow. I mean, you'll see it when you walk around. You're some people that know each other. They go vacation with each other. And this is all built from this organization. That's so, awesome. I mean, it starts off small and it just it gets out of control and grows so quickly that it's just you just let it go. Just yeah. take your hands off the wheel and, and let the magic happen. And that's really what it's about, I think, is building those relationships. Yeah. And I, I, there's no doubt that these young men and women come down and, and they know that these captains have taken their time, the weekend, you know, the community supportive of them. That's got to feel, that's got to feel great. You know? right. yeah. Well, so some of these folks don't know what they're in for. And that's the coolest part. <laughs> oh, yeah. coolest, like, yeah. So I've, I've seen coming. this movie and I keep coming back to watch it again. Yeah, so, no, that's great. Right? Yeah. So when they get down here and they see, like, I try to tell them, right. And they're just, they, they just can't get their brain wrapped around what it's going to actually look like. And then when they leave, their eyes are just wide open and they're like, same thing, right. All the captains call back. Everyone that walks out the door on Sunday morning is like, I want to come back again next year. Yeah. And some of them will go, I don't even want to fish. I just want to help. I want to be part of it. I want to be connected to it in some way. It's got energy, right? Yeah, that's a good vibe. Uh, Steve, how do you choose who gets to come? I mean, it's, uh, let's go back from when you first started, way back at the beginning. I remember those days, right? And then how, how many people do we have involved in it up to now? Yeah, that's, that's a great story. So way back in the day, we were sitting in the front yard having a couple of beers, talking to some fishing buddies and said, you know, I heard about some of my friends up in Tampa took a couple of troops fishing. They got three or four boats together and went out and had a great day. I said, man, we should do that. That's, that's a good cause. And we have a great place to fish in the 10,000 islands of Gulf of Mexico. And so I got excited about it and I reached out and I thought, well, you know, if I call McDill Air Force Base, they're the central hub of all special ops and all branches are represented there. Maybe I can drum up some some people that would like to drive down. And they did. So within a month, Jamie, my wife and I, we started calling and we got about 35 troops that said, yeah, we'd love to come fishing. I got uh, about 15 captains and we took off and we went down to Goodland. I mean, we were we were very uh, unorganized, to say the least, because we were so uh, new. So new. Yeah. And uh, it was raining. It was muddy. It was all the things that you hope not to happen. Red ants crawling up your leg when you're walking around. So we went fishing and I get out there. And I, I, I can rest. The only one I've got to fish. I got to fish the very first one and then it blew up so big. Yeah. I haven't been able to fish again. But I remember fishing down there and about 30 minutes into the event, my wife calls me on the phone and says, um, I just had five troops show up and everybody's gone and they want to go fishing. I'm like, oh my God. So I get on the phone. I start calling guys that are close. I said, all right, you go back, you get some, pick up a couple, meet me halfway. I'll grab some. And we, and we made it work. And, and a funny story there, there's a guy named Larry Burt. He's one of my captains to this day. Uh, he was putting his boat in and Jamie saw that he was by himself. She walks over, she goes, uh, uh, are you going fishing by yourself? <laughs> he says, "Why, well, yes, I am, man. And of course, you know, you look at Jamie, she can get a lot of things accomplished. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what she, she sees in me. She can get me to do stuff. Yeah, she I'm, wants. Just, I'm just saying. So uh, <laughs> I look at her and she said, uh, yeah, I'd ask Larry if uh, he said, what's going on over there? Said, well, we're doing this fishing thing. These are military guys. He goes, well, hell, put them all on my boat. I'll take all of them fishing. Uh. And which was a really cool story. And he, he took them out fishing. And fast forward to today. I mean, we're up to 150 troops. We put them up at, at a five-star resort, and we take them golfing. We take them fishing. It's so cool how this thing started. And once people got a taste of it, the captains, like I said earlier, they love this thing. And, and to Tim Ferriss's point, my favorite part of the whole thing, it, it, there's two pieces. There's the takeoff Saturday morning at Hamilton Harbor Yacht Club. Yay. You've got to see that. It's, got to, if yeah. You've got to be there before 6 o'clock. You've got to see the arrival of the troops. You've got to see the national anthem, the flyover. I promise you, you will be glad you got your butt out of bed. And then the other thing is like today, I'm going to go to the hotel and watch these troops arrive. 
And, and these guys walk in the door and they're looking from left or they're looking for right. And they look at each other. It's like the nicest place. A lot of them have ever been in, yeah, you know, yeah. and they're, and you can read their lips. It's like, Oh my goodness. You know? And, and so it's really cool to see that. And they're like, we knew we were going fishing. But we did not know that this was happening. Yeah, you know, so it's it's we're proud of that five really star cool. treatment all the way VIP. It it feels good because that's how we do it yeah. in the two three nine. Yeah, the two three nines <laughs> get it up. Now we know, uh, Rich Captain Captain Hampton. You know, we know that you have been involved for a long time as a board member. What does that entail? So just trying to keep up with Jamie Lloyd and just keeping up with Jamie, and and she's kind of the matriarch of the program. I and mean, we Steve's the face of it, but the work gets done. He'll tell you by the girls that are that are getting the work done. Uh, yeah. They just give us assignments and we carry them out. And uh, that's how this work gets done. It's kind of funny to piggyback on what Steve was saying. You know, in years past, we've had a selection process that was pretty benign where we would just put a list out and people would sign up. This year, we went out and selected, handpicked some of the finest military folks you can get your hands on. These are, um, how should I say, just they have special skill sets, the folks we're bringing in. Yeah. They've killed a lot of people. Yeah. They've seen a thing or two. Yeah. They've seen a thing. Or two. <laughs> They've been and, and, a lot of bad guys and, and well deserved. And they're the ones that, I mean, all the military folks are important, but these guys are the ones that are front line, ready to go. These are the guys when the wolf is scratching at the door. Yeah, they're the ones that are going to go answer it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yeah. no, that's imp that's important. So tell me a little bit about the activities, the agenda, what's going to happen. I know that. That I'm a sponsor, yes, myself and my myself and Sean McGrail with the two three nine, uh, Studio two three nine and two three nine podcast. So Sean's been great. We we have a table. We've got a table. So I, hopefully I get that get positioned in the right spot and we're and we're good. <laughs> um, Miss Diana's going to come with us at the the thing. So Diana's going to be there. We've got a nice group of people and we're really looking forward to it. But tell us a little bit about the agenda, starting from today all the way to the end. Okay, so today the troops, uh, Rich has been, and uh, so backing up a little bit when it comes to the troops that we have invited in, uh, Rich approached me last year right after our event and said, you know, I would like the opportunity to maybe go after and handpick some of the troops that we could bring in here. And he told me the type of troop he was going to pursue. And I'm like, well, Rich, that's a great idea. It seems like a pipe dream to me to get it done uh, because of the the active duty and the nature of the soldier he was or the, the troop that he was uh, approaching and fast forward to now he did it. He brought in these special ops characters that are the baddest of the baddest along with Tim Fritz, um, Lieutenant Colonel Fritz and him have worked together hand in hand and made this thing happen. So I'm, I'm beyond pleased and super excited about the work that they've done. So these guys are coming in today. Uh, Rich uh, set up a shuttle system. We have uh, we rented three uh, passenger vans, and we have a team of our our from our staff going up and shuttling these guys back and forth from the airport. They're flying in from literally all over the world. We got one guy coming in from Germany. Wow! And they're flying in, and they're coming up to uh, the airport there, and we'll bring them back here to the hotel. They they get. Uh, greeted they get checked in their rooms these rooms is at the naples grand bay resort Ooh. which ain't no joke right. all right you're you're overlooking the gulf of mexico uh all the nicest of the nice things you can possibly have and then they'll be treated to a captain's dinner uh and meeting tonight starting at five o'clock and uh we give away a lot of things a lot of swag and things to everybody that night and we have a comedian afterwards that'll entertain them they get to meet their captain who they're going to be fishing with Saturday. The captains are jacked up. As much as the troops are jacked up, the captains are ready to rock oh, and roll. Awesome. They love meeting these guys. They become they actually become friends. And I and Lieutenant Colonel Fritz here, I'm telling you, he he came down a long time ago and he became very good friends with one of the captains and they talk frequently all the time. Uh, so that the relationships that are made beyond is cool. I get text messages from foreign lands and stuff. It's really cool pictures. It's, <laughs> It's pretty, it's pretty badass to say yeah. the least. It's really cool. But, uh, so they'll come in, we'll do that. And then tomorrow, uh, morning, we have some guys going up to Bass Pro. We're going to shuttle up 22 troops up to Bass Pro. They're putting a bunch of boats in their little private lake. We'll take them bass oh, fishing. Wow, that's awesome. Feed them lunch after their little tournament. And then we'll ship them back. We have a bunch of troops going golfing at two different golf courses that Rich set up, uh, tomorrow. So they get to golf, they get to bass fish, and then we have a whole bunch of them going to Key Wade, and I got boats to take them to Key Wade for a beach. Sign day. me up for that one. I want to go to the right. beach. <laughs> right. I, mean, I like going fishing with you because we catch a lot of fish. We've had some good uh, days. Yeah, yeah. we've had some good days. So, uh, so they'll come back, and they're going to, tomorrow's a free day. A lot of them will want to stay and hang out the, at the resort. And then, of course, they got Naples to go 
plow around to do some things too. So with this used to be a two day event, a Friday and Saturday event, but, uh, we had to move it to Thursday to add a day because, uh, when they came in on Friday, they're off base and they're super excited and jacked up and they got a little marinated, <laughs> if you will. And they would show up uh, the next morning. I uh, remember to the bows. I that. Dude, they look like they crawled out of a culvert pipe. You not, know, not and, uncommon. Not yeah, uncommon. Yeah. So we uh we had to give them a day to sober up. So that's why Friday is built in the way it is. And then of course Saturday morning, and I'll tell everybody out there, everybody that is I mean, I would drive across the state to watch this. Hamilton Harbor Yacht Club on Naples Bay, if you can be there before 6 a.m., you're going to see the troops arrive under police escort. Sheriff's Office is going to escort them in with their motors. Three chartered buses provided by Dolphin Transportation. All these troops are going to come in this massive boat barn that you could play two NFL football games inside. It's so big. They're going to assemble, and then they come walking out of the barn together to the crowd that is waiting them, all the captains. Every boat has a, a big American flag displayed on it. We give them lunches. We give them beer. Uh, Suncoast Beverage, our, our Budweiser sponsorship, they do a fantastic job. Uh, Sean McGrill is a big part of that. He's always taking care of us from Coastal Beverage as well. And they, they get on the boats. You can hear them hooting and hollering and laughing and carrying on. You can tell that they're excited to be where they are. And then we do the national anthem. I got this badass guitar player that we're flying in from Atlanta, Georgia. Andrew Suggs is his name. Look him up on YouTube, the Grand Canyon National Anthem, and listen wow. to his national anthem on the electric guitar. And he's going to be playing for us, and he's going to play that thing. The sheriff's office uh, usually does a great flyover with the American flag for the troops. And then, you know, these guys are around this equipment all the time, this military equipment. But for some reason, when this chopper comes over, it's just like you thought, thought they'd never seen one before. Right? It's so cool. <laughs> And give, uh, just give you chills. Yeah. And then they all take off in the boats and these boats. I mean, the offshore boats have three and four V8s on the back of them. Uh, the nicest of the nice of backwater boats are top end bay boats. The captains, I'll challenge anybody in, in all of Florida. Nobody will outdo or beat my captains. I have the best captains, period, bar none. And they, they go out and our priority is let's go fish and have a good day. Yeah, we build a little competition in for the ones that want to compete. But it's not about that. It's about fun. It's bragging rights right. at most. And uh, yeah, we're man. I'm I'm jacked up myself. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Just get on the boat right now. Let's go. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, one question. Uh, one little little thing to add on here, Tim. Why is why is Naples so important? And how do you like it in Naples? I so, mean, a good question. Naples is fantastic, right? It's beautiful. Right. You come down here Supported. and you're like, oh, I, I couldn't imagine why you would live in this gorgeous place with amazing <laughs> weather and friendly people and a supportive community. This is weird, right? <laughs> you walk in the door and it sells itself. So, Naples is just absolutely fantastic. Um, it, it goes back to what I said before. When you come down, you meet the people, you build the relationships instantly. It happens so quickly. It's so organic. It's very, very simple. So when you come down and experience what Naples is, all the things it has to offer, you just want to come back. I mean, Rich and I were talking and he's like, hey, where, what are you thinking when you get out of the military? What are you going to do? Where are you going to come? You think about Naples? Yeah. Of yeah, course I'm thinking yeah, about Naples, please. right? Yeah. Uh, I've been to Naples. Anyone that's been to Naples is thinking about coming back to Naples, <laughs> yeah, right? right? And they have a choice. Right, right. Yeah, yeah it's that's awesome. You know, and to be truthful, I've been, I've moved around a ton in my career, right? I was, I was doing the math and I ran out of fingers with locations as I was coming over here and, and communities are different. Right. And, and I will say that the Naples community is the most supportive community to the military that I've seen in my time period. Now. That's awesome. And that makes us feel good. That's <laughs> that awesome. makes me feel yeah. so good. And, and thank yeah. you for that. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, thank because, you. thank you. because that's not always the case, you know, no, no. America's the best country in the, in the world. Hands yeah. down. I've seen a lot of the world and it's terrible. Yeah. Uh, America's America's the light. We're very fortunate. Plain and simple. Yeah. And then when you come to a community like this and you see the patriotism that's that's universal, it's fantastic. It's just it's a blessing to be around. Yeah. Um, we I know you guys got a lot to do. We'll wrap it up here real quick, but I got a question for for Captain Hampton. Rich, what are some of the takeaways that you've seen from these soldiers? And what are the some of the takeaways from you being involved? in something like this yeah so it's it's one of it, it's the most rewarding thing i do um outside of my work right it's uh it's very important to me not just because of my tenure in the military but you know terrorists checking uh kids in i call them kids these, these young troops in a couple years ago naples grand was a, or uh naples beach club was about four years ago right right and uh kid walks up and he says hey i'm, I'm here to check in and Terra gets to talking to him this kid's from detroit been on two deployments never been on a boat <laughs> that never been on a boat that's a 
right? Think about that. We have a very skewed view because we just take this stuff for granted, but our military, you know, they're out there deploying uh, to places that you can't even fathom to Tim's point in the conditions that they're operating under. So when they come here and I get to see the enjoyment in, in these guys, man, there's nothing more rewarding. It's, it's, it's amazing. Actually. Can I tell you a quick story to piggyback on what yeah, Rich just said? So several years ago, uh, we were finishing up Saturday night with the dinner and there was a, uh, a whole platoon of army Rangers that were invited and there was 21 of them and they were straight out of the mountains of Afghanistan at the time. And Lieutenant Oki, he looked like he was maybe 24, 25. He must have had his act squared away. He was, I mean, his, his guys that came with him looked like they were 16 and 17 years old. I was just um, unbelievable to look at these guys and think, wow, you guys have been fighting for our freedom over there. And at the time, we were in the middle of the Iraq, Iran, uh, the whole heavy debacle. It was heavy artil artillery every day. And these guys were uh, at the forefront. They were in the mountains fighting these guys on a daily basis. They were probably getting shot at every day. I forget how many missions he told me that they did in a year, but it, it was way more than 365 days a year. They, they fought several missions, you know, a couple yeah. missions per day. So he told me, at the, and he was kind of a quiet guy. And as I was finishing up on the microphone that Saturday night, he comes up to me. He says, Steve, can I, can I get on the microphone to your people for a minute? I said, absolutely. And it, which surprised me because I didn't think that he wanted to speak in front of everybody. And he got on there and he looked at the crowd and he said, uh, I just want everybody to know that we knew we were coming fishing. But when we got here, we had no idea that we were going to be afforded such luxury and such uh, a community that welcomed us the way you have. Thank you for that. He said, I want everybody here to know that, you know, we found out about this three months ago word got to us while we were still deployed in the mountains. Uh, he said, and, and as the lieutenant of my platoon, he says, it's my job to keep their morale high. He says, I ended every briefing with, all right, boys, let's keep it, each other safe because in September we're headed to Naples to go fishing. Ooh. And I, and I lost it. I'm like, <laughs> man, that was tough for me to swallow. And, and, and still to this day, yeah. it gets me, you know? So yeah. that was, that was, that was, that told me that say, you know what, we're doing the right thing. This is this has got to continue. It's hard to believe that that might. Well, it has been. That's the that, that's the drive to keep these guys alive and to keep them together and and that camaraderie and teamwork yeah, exactly. and to keep that going. We 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 owe that. You know, we absolutely. Owe that. Yeah. So, um, hey guys, it's been great. It's so so good. I know it's a busy day. I kind of asked you guys to come in. Um, you know, I'll be there on Saturday night. Awesome. We're gonna have a great time, and I, I appreciate it. And anytime during the year, we want to pump up an event. Uh, I'd love to have uh, Colonel come on, talk a little bit about, you know, his Air Force world. And then, uh, of course, Captain's always invited and, and Steve as well. So we, we want to be nothing but truly supportive of such a great, great thing. Anything else to throw out there and that I'm forgetting? One more thing. Uh, if everybody will, uh, we've got this boat. Uh, Naples Second Soldier Fishing is <laughs> raffling off this boat. Uh, we've lost a couple fundraisers, unfortunately, at the end of this year because of COVID. And those were important to us. We want to keep up the level of this program. And we need the funding. If we can sell out all the tickets for this raffle boat, we will have next year covered by far. We're selling 1,500 tickets at $100 a pop. We are up to 800. I told everybody we can sell this thing out because I know my people here in Naples. So log on to NaplesTakeASoldierFishing.com or NaplesTASF.com. It'll get you there. You can buy a ticket online or get your butt out of bed and come down and see us on Saturday at Naples uh, Hamilton Harbor Yacht Club. And you can you can buy the tickets right there. The boat is all over Facebook. Please log on to my Facebook page. Steve Lloyd is my name, L-O-Y-D. Uh, and you can see it. Naples Take a Soldier Fishing has a Facebook page. You can see it. Buy these tickets. Let's do this. And, uh, hey, 100 bucks, dude, you might come home with a 40 to $50,000 boat. You bring that in, tell your wife you're giving her $40,000, $50,000 gift. She may take you upstairs and do those things you like. So get on out here and buy this. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, there you go. Two through nine. Unsensed. Oh, thank you, guys. You guys are unbelievable. Thanks, and we have a little little uh, ritual. We always say uh, to take it out. We go uh, two through nine. Unsensed. Oh, everything Southwest Florida and beyond. And we are out. out. Good job, guys. Thanks. Enjoyed it. <laughs>